do it, we can do it, we can do it. And a lot of people, this is a comment I get a lot, is whenever I stream about a person, people are like, you hate them, how can you hate them? You love them, how can you love them? I'm just talking. I'm just talking. My whole body is like covered in Vicks Vapor Rub right now, which is great because you actually can't feel any pain because you're distracted from your skin burning, which is absolutely perfect. Um, not drinking tonight because again, I am ill. What do I have? No idea. No clue. Today's Tuesday. It came on on Sunday. Yesterday was horrible. Today I feel not good, but like yesterday, my whole body was like aching. I felt crazy. Like I get really, whenever I'm sick, I like start to feel like very deeply unwell up here. That was going on like crazy yesterday. Today, I just feel like bad in my face and like stuffy. Like today it feels like normal person sick, not like Victorian era sick. Um, <clears throat> but really the only difference for you all is I sound a little bit different and I have my glasses on. Normally I don't stream in my glasses because I don't like how it reflects. It's very distracting for me. But my eyes are itchy, so I didn't want to put contacts in. And because I've been putting Vicks Vapor Rub on me all day, I was like, I know it's going to burn so bad if I even try and put contacts in. Because it's all probably just be mostly Vicks I'm putting into my eye. Um, tonight's drink of choice is a cool blue Gatorade. <laughs> Attendance check. Let's go ahead and get straight into it. I wanted, like I said, it sucks that I'm sick because I wanted to be much more involved in creating this stream than I was. My assistant did most of it, but I did do part of it and it is good. So I'm still excited, but I just feel like this, this is not a coincidence. Remember when I got sick on the Britney Spears stream? That sucked because I could not do it justice. <clears throat> Question for the culture. How do you deal with your boyfriend playing video games? My boyfriend is giving me the biggest ick. Let's get into it. So my boyfriend plays video games and I always said like I'll never date anyone that plays video games and I've ultimately decided that if your boyfriend's video games are giving you the ick, it's like other things that are giving you the ick. So I think the reason my boyfriend's video games don't give me the ick is because A, he mainly plays the video games like where him and his friends are playing together live. So I'm like, oh, that's like a cool thing to do with your friends. So I don't really view it as icky because it's like you're doing it with your friends you know but also a lot of um yeah like if he's giving you the ick like something is icky and you're not wrong and you need to dig deeper because these are the other things about boyfriend video games that give me the ick when they stay up all night playing and you guys like don't go to bed together if you live together because why don't you want to go to bed with her? You'd rather be playing your video games. And, like, my, my boyfriend doesn't do that. Like, he plays video games randomly, but it's not, like, every night for hours and hours and hours. He probably plays most days, but it's not for, like, hours and hours upon hours and hours. Um, So that might be what is giving you the ick is that... This convo is really interesting as a guy. I feel like you're like at a museum right now. You're probably learning so much. Um, and yeah, like I'm not into video games. He tried to get me to be into video games. I honestly just find them to be very stressful. I don't understand how that's relaxing to people. Like I'm happy for you. Actually, I do understand it. I just don't. It's not that way for me at all. Um, me being the girl who stays up to games so that they can go to bed early. I am never off on Tuesdays. This is Cray Cray. Welcome. It's, it takes two is really fun, a co-op game. Had to update Twitch because it wasn't working. Yeah, I had to update my streaming software. I don't know what the problem was today. Hey, it's Jay. Thanks for subscribing for 12 months. We basically live together now. But yeah, if your boyfriend's video games are giving you the ick, it's probably something else that's giving you the ick. What it could be that's very valid is like him screaming because like being next to a man screaming all the time like is kind of jarring. So maybe be like do that in another room. That could be it. Like the ick... The ick could be something small or the ick could be something major. So I'm not telling you you guys need to break up. I'm just saying, like, I think there's an ick beyond the game itself. I think it's it's something something else is going. Together alone time. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. 
Men can't scream. That's for girls. So anyway, tonight we are talking about the Andy Cohen. So Andy Cohen, who those of you who live under a rock and have never heard of him, which I'm assuming you guys know who he is. Um, he is the kind of like, I don't want to call him the mastermind behind Real Housewives, but he's like a major player in the Real Housewives universe. He kind of turned it into what it is. He didn't come up with the OG idea, but he really like brought it to life in my opinion. And he is a producer for other things as well. So he was born in St. Louis, Missouri to Evelyn and Lou Cohen. He has a sister, Emily Rosenfield, and he is Jewish with roots in Poland, Russia, and Lithuania. I wonder when his family came over. Anyway, um, his childhood experience was deeply shaped by his love of television. He describes it as his home base. One of the most influential shows in his life was All My Children, a soap opera that captivated him so much that he even got his mother into watching it. Cohen humorously notes this was unusual, as in general, Jewish women don't watch soaps. I have no idea if that's true. I don't, did they ask him to speak on that? Probably not, but here he is. I look insane right now. Maybe I do have the flu or something. If, oh, also the reason I'm like really not reacting about it is because we also have a couple days off school for fall break, so I didn't have to work today, so I was like... Literally doing almost nothing today. I actually did get a lot done. I made my little pencils. Do y'all remember when he got super drunk hosting New Year's Eve that one year in New York? Oh, I hope that video's in here. I know we talk about that in here, but I can't remember if the video's there. So anyway, beyond television, um, young Cohen was a fan of the St. Louis Cardinals, although he admits he hated playing catch with his father, Mood. His early teenage years were also marked by a personal realization. Around the age of 12 or 13, Cohen became aware that he was gay. At this moment of understanding came while he was in his dad's tennis club locker room. What a place to realize that. What a place to realize that. At the time, it left him feeling devastated as there were no openly gay role models he could look up to during that period. He graduated from Clayton High School in Clayton, Missouri in 1986, where he was a member of the track team, participated in student government. He's like very much all-American, very much all-American hero. Um, he became the sophomore class president, better than I did in student government, and was a member of the yearbook staff. He also interned at St. Louis radio and TV stations in high school. He had, part of why I chose him is because he has like a very, traditional is not the right, like typical journalism career, which I think is just interesting to see him in these like random roles. I assumed he was straight somehow. You are a man. I'm so glad you're here. Um, is that better or worse than the men's underwear aisle at Target? Is that where you realized? Uh, all American gay. Now he's for sure playing catch. Do no, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Also, look at this stain on my Chili's sweatshirt from my grill. I like hit it on the side of it. I'm so mad about this because I love this sweatshirt and it used to be one of my more formal sweatshirts. And now because of the stain, it's been demoted to a casual sweatshirt. So, this is Andy Cohen in high school, an all-American gay, as we as we said. So he graduated from Clayton High School in 1986, and then he went to Boston University, where he received a Bachelor's of Science in Broadcast Journalism, and he wrote for the Boston University student newspaper, The Daily Free Press, um, and my assistant said, I literally cannot find examples of his writing or anything from his college days, which is so annoying. I want to read it so bad. Maybe I'm just dumb, though. <laughs> he went to BU. So that's, you see what I mean? Like, that's why I picked him is because like I listened to a podcast about him celebrity memoir book club I get a lot of ideas from them if we're being honest so thank you ladies so someone asked me if I steal ideas from them and I was like I would say I steal topics from them but because we have such a different format I don't view it as like copy paste because they're talking about just one book and I'm talking about like other people's views of them too I don't know I'm like yeah they definitely inspire me to pick certain people because I learn from them but I'm not doing like episode by episode going over the memoirs, so I don't really think that's that crazy that two people talk about celebrities. But anyway, <clears throat> that podcast showed me he has like a relatively normal journalist career pre-Housewives, which I think is really interesting. So... His love of the soap operas led him to his first celebrity interview with Susan Lucci, who he persuaded to agree to an interview with him in New York in December 1987 when he was a journalism student. This, um, is it stealing if they're talking about someone else's book, though? That's what I mean. I was like, we're all just kind of talking about different people. So, 
I don't think either of us is in the right or wrong. But anyway, <clears throat> apparently it was like so not normal that he got this interview, but he just like badgered her and she was like, oh my God, literally fine. So let us watch. No, Bravo cannot give me notifications. Damon, from where are you calling? Hi, this is Nicole from Chicago. Hey, Nicole, what's question your question? Is, my question is for Susan. Hi, Andy, love you. Hi. I love Wanda. I love uh, I love Wanda Sykes. Susan, what was I your should first do her. impression of Andy when you first met him? I'm write that down. I read the book, and it was really interesting, so I want to know what your thoughts were. Well, I mean, I, it's in the book. He, he First of all, he wrote me a letter and asked if I would have lunch with him, and I wish I had saved the letter. I Ooh. so wish I had saved the letter, because whatever Andy said and however Andy said it, it just jumped off the page, and I, I, I called my publicist, I said, I can do this, I can go to lunch, I would like to meet Andy Cohen, and he impressed me so much. So yeah, that's, he just literally wrote a letter to her, which is like insane that she agreed to a college student interview. She has no real memory of this. No, he talked about it in the book that like, looking back, he did a really bad job at the interview and like, it gets crazy that she agreed to it. But I think just because he like randomly asked, she was like, why the hell not? So this is a throwback to his college days. Andy Cohen, these days the king of Bravo might be all calm, cool, and collected on his late night talk show. But he put up a little throwback clip going back to his early days of broadcasting. Uh, he was just getting started at Boston University. Oh, Let's see how it went. Sorry. <laughs> so it sounds like a politician, doesn't he? That's what I was thinking. Some other top stuff, they would love to have three of the first baseman Kent Herbeck and make a three-for-one deal with the Braves. So the Sox met with Herbeck's agent last night and offered him a three-year deal with an option for a fourth year. Like, it's just so funny to see Andy Cohen doing, like, a boring, regular journalism. We really do all have to grind. That's why I'll probably never be successful is I physically can't do this. Like, if you put me on the local news, I'd be like, who the fuck cares? <laughs> like, I can only talk about things that are interesting to me, so I just can't grind it out in the early stages of a career. I can't do it. But there's a big, big dollar sign rising over Fenway Park because Herbeck wants a four-year deal in the 10 to $11 million range, if you can believe that. That's pretty good. Yeah, because he wrote he, he wrote when he posted it. There's me like fumbling through the sports cast at Boston oh. a long time ago. That wasn't fumbling. No, yeah. no, he, he definitely needs a teleprompter. Yeah. He did write that. And then he wrote, how about my hairline? Yeah, amazing. <laughs> but his <laughs> mannerisms are still yeah. exactly. still yeah. to is it you know what I think he said to us my before we sit here, he's like, I always wanted to do something where I could just be myself yes. on TV, yes. and he is doing that. Right. And that is, even he's in been nominated for 18 him. Emmys, yeah. one, one, like it's worked out since... Okay, so for anyone interested, this is the difference between a BA and a BS journalism degree. BA is more focused on humanities, and BS focuses on math, data, and stats. That makes sense. What was his BS? Yeah, B Bachelor's of Science in Broadcast Journalism. So he understands the ratings. He's not... That makes so much sense. Holy shit. He learned about journalism from, like, a capitalist viewpoint of, like, the data and the math and the money... Not from a humanities viewpoint of, like, humans. <laughs> Things are all coming together. You see, this is why I love streaming. So he interned at CBS News alongside Julie Chan, who was also working as an intern. He worked at CBS News from 1990 to 2000. See, that's what I mean. Like, I can't work somewhere for 10 years. Are you kidding me? Um, starting as a news clerk on CBS This Morning and eventually becoming a producer on the show 48 Hours. And this is what I mean. Like, he produced, like, random news things. Like, the Oklahoma City bombing, Hurricane Andrew, the crash of Flight TWA, Flight 80. I don't know what that is. So, I'm seeing mixed reviews about this. Some people say he did produce these and some people are saying it was a different Andy Cohen. But I'm choosing to believe that it was our Andy Cohen produced the 1995 Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen comedy It Takes Two and was an associate producer on Captain Ron in 1992. So, like I said, some people are saying it was a different guy. Maybe it was, but I'm choosing to believe it was him. So, he worked as the head of original programming and development for the cab cable channel Tiro in 2000. He And that's what's crazy to me is, like, he was literally just out here grinding. He was out here grinding every day for us, and we didn't even know what he was building. And he's very, like, behind the camera. It seems like 
in college, he did a little bit in front of the camera because that's what they make you do in college. They make everyone try everything. That's the point of journalism college. I know this because I did a, like, a, I think it was five or six weeks, a summer program about journalism at uh, actually the University of Southern California because I wanted them to let me in because I had already done that, but then they still rejected me. So that was cool of them. But anyway, so we took, like, a couple college journalism classes when I was, like, 17, and they literally made us do everything. And I was like, I don't care about the microphones. And they were like, you need to learn. And I was like, but I literally don't care. And that's why I have a sociology degree. I digress. So, <clears throat> after his time at CBS News, literally grinding, producing the news behind the camera. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. So, anyway... He was on camera a little bit in college, and then it seems like he was completely off camera until he became, like, hyper successful with the Real Housewives franchise, and then he started doing the reunions and stuff. So he was, like, mainly an off-camera person for the majority of his career. So he worked as the head of original programming for the cable, um, cable channel Tiro. T-R-I-O. Does anyone know what that is? I think it later turned into Bravo. He was responsible for developing and overseeing all the channel's original productions, including the documentary Gay Republicans. Someone find that. I tried to find it. I can't find it anywhere. I found, like, articles about it, but I want to watch it. Um, the Gay Republicans documentary in the year 2000? Are you kidding me? I need to, I need to see that absolutely right now um easy riders slash raging bulls brilliant and but canceled <clears throat> and then tyria was bought by bravo so cohen moved to bravo as vice president of original programming and development then um in 2004 the as the executive producer of a documentary called the n-word again really curious about that Really wondering. Being a gay Republican is now crazy, but in 2000 is 10 times crazier. I, I need to see the history of the gay Republicans. I want a documentary about the history of the um, gay Republicans. I need to know that. I need to see that. So he's randomly in Sex in the City. So maybe he did want to be on the camera and maybe he was just playing the long game. Probably allowed to try and get pregnant again for another two months. Okay, it says so it's said. around three minutes. And I thought I have all this time on my hands to volunteer. I love Sex in the City. Maybe we should have a stream about Sex in the City. And there, in the dark, Charlotte realized she had no idea where she was going, in Barney's or in life. But sometimes, even if you're not sure of your direction, you can find your way to something wonderful. You know, they have these over there in the- There he is. I swear, <clears throat> I looked and looked, and then I thought, best if she finds me. I'm eating them tomorrow. Cute, huh? There he is. Okay. Why is why are you here? What are you doing here? Um, I saw that episode recently and I was like, hello, I think being a gay man who's a Republican for economy reasons would be less insane than being a gay Republican for any reason now, less insurrectiony. Um Oh my god, I'm having so many thoughts right now, and the chat is in a million places. Really we have to move on. So, in 2006, they started developing and producing reality TV shows, making Bravo a home for unscripted content. He was involved in watching major hits like The Real Housewives, as we know, Top Chef, and Project Runway. I had no idea that he was involved with Project Runway, and I'm really having trouble envisioning him on Top Chef. Maybe this is, like... I'm just viewing him as an archetype and viewing him as a stereotype, but I feel like he so leans into being, like, the gay friend on Real Housewives, envisioning him as just, like, a producer on Top Chef. I'm just like, what are you doing? Because that's, like, not the brand he's created for himself. Right? Like, Top Chef? This chat is the energy Bravo has always intended. Oh, oopsies. So, let's talk about The Real Housewives. I'm not really going to get into the other things he's done because it seems like The Real Housewives is the most important to him, so it's going to be the most important to us too. So, The Real Housewives franchise, produced by Bravo, is one of the most successful... Of the successful reality television franchises in history. It features affluent women in various cities and their glamorous lifestyles, offering a peek into their drama-filled lives. Also, for any Real Housewives fans here, did you see today that Tamara said she's autistic? 
I literally can't make this up. This is why I love reality TV, because they're crazier than scripted TV. No scripted television show would have someone be an absolute demon towards their friend and then be like, I'm autistic. You can't write that. And then now she's trying to backpedal. And she's like, I never even said that when she literally did. She was like, I just said we were thinking about it. Because she said my therapist said. Therapist can't diagnose you. It's fucking crazy. We might have to do a Tamra. Wrong. Have you never seen Glee? Glee brings the chaos of reality TV to a script. I'm thinking about rewatching Glee. <clears throat> I feel like to be a real housewife, you're legally not allowed to have media training. That's why they won't hire me because I had DIY media training by watching TV for years. Um, oh, you started Below Deck? I'm watching Below Deck right now. Well, I'm done with Below Deck. I'm watching Below Deck Med right now. I used to watch them, like, each week for the first couple seasons, then I fell off. <sighs> anyway, I'm, this is, I'm so happy right now. I, this is why I didn't cancel stream, because I've literally just been, like, home alone being sick and sulking. Well, not home alone, my boyfriend's here, but I mean, like, I haven't been out working in the world like I'm used to. So I've just been, like, around the house, like, mm, I'm sick. But, like, this is giving me life right now. Maybe a Glee stream. Oh, Below Deck Sailing is on the list as well. I gotta do Below Deck Sailing, Below Deck, um, Down Under. There's another one. I'm still scared for the time we watched clips of What's His Nuts from <laughs> Glee being creepy. <clears throat> in my state, licensed counselors and therapists can diagnose with mental health disorders. I feel like in California they probably can't, and that's where she lives, so I'm digging my heels in the sand on her being wrong unfortunately but anyway um since its inception in 2006 the franchise has expanded to include 10 u.s based shows and multiple international versions the show's mix of wealth conflict and drama has captivated millions of viewers and shaped reality tv so andy cohen was the head of production at bravo so like i said it wasn't his idea but he was like in charge and like grew it um, he initially doubted the Real Housewives project. After watching early rough cuts of the Real Housewives of Orange County in 2006, he famously wanted to kill the show. So we thought that he was the Real Housewives mother. He's actually the Real Housewives murderer. He almost took it from us. So I get why he dedicated himself to making it so great because he feels guilty is the way that I'm perceiving this. He felt the footage wasn't strong enough and it lacked the necessary emotional depth. However, Bravo's executive vice president, Lauren Zalzanek, pushed for its continuation, recognizing the potential of the series. Cohen eventually reconsidered and became the series, um, became the franchise's biggest championship and f biggest champion, I can't speak, shaping its future direction. She played a crucial role that Lauren, uh, what was her title again? So he was, um, ah, what was his title? He was head of production, and this is Bravo's executive vice president. I don't understand companies, how they work at all. Did you guys know, my boyfriend taught me this. I'm literally so stupid. You can have like a bunch of vice presidents in a company. It's just a title, and it literally means nothing. Because my only context for vice is like vice principal, and there's one, and it's the second in command of the principal, or the vice president, and there's one, and there's second in command to the president. So like... When I see people with the title vice president of banking, I th think that they're like hot shit. Like I'm like, holy shit, you're the VP of banking. There can be hundreds of VPs in a company, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of VPs. That is crazy to me. Your high school had four vice principals. Okay. I clearly don't know anything because I really thought that title vice of what? That's what I'm saying. Like, of what? Of what? Yourself, I guess? We're all the vice president now. Oh, and there's executive VPs and normal VPs. Exactly. That title means nothing to me. Um, we had, like, six and four years because they kept being racist and bad. <laughs> I know your superintendent is tired. I know your superintendent is tired. Running for vice president of history streams. Apparently all of you are vice president because that's how vice presidents work. Um, so anyway. Had four volunteers. What? Oh my God, I can't do this. So anyway, so it sounds like I don't know if Laura's his boss or not. I really don't know. Lauren, not Laura. I'm stupid. Sorry. 
I've taken a lot of Allegra today. Um, she played a crucial role in saving the Real Housewives of Orange County from being scrapped. She believed in the potential of the show, understanding that its focus on affluent women in their lives could resonate with audiences. Her persistence led to additional filming, which ultimately transformed the show into a cultural phenomenon. She also helped refine the show's focus on interpersonal drama, the hallmark of its future success. So Lauren is who we thought Andy Cohen was. To sum it up, and then Cohen also drew inspiration from classic soap operas like All My Children and Desperate Housewives. He was particularly influenced by strong female characters with glamorous lifestyles on the show. The Real Housewives was conceived as a reality TV version of a soap opera blending the luxury with interpersonal conflict. The concept centered on the women in these communities, um, much like their scripted counterparts. Bravo's 2005 press release, it came out in 2006, made clear the inspiration from shows like Desperate Housewives and Peyton Place. I've never heard of Peyton Place. The Real Housewives of Orange County was designed to depict the real-life Desperate Housewives showing the everyday drama and wealth of wealthy women in Southern California. The parallels between the scripted Desperate Housewives and the reality-based um, Real Housewives helped set the tone for the franchise with high-end lifestyles and personal conflict driving the narrative. How many times are they going to mention luxury and personal drama? So, originally it was filmed under the title Behind the Gates, which the gates emphasized the affluent community of Koto de Casa. If you watched my Vicki Gunvalson stream, we talked about this a little bit. She's the OG of the OC. However, the title was eventually changed to Real Housewives of Orange County to align with the show's focus. Apparently, there was an in-between where Andy Cohen, they changed it from behind the gates to just the Real Housewives. And then um, the title change by Lauren bec is because she wanted it to be able to be applicable to other cities. Because they were just going to call it the Real Housewives. And she was like, no, the Real Housewives of Orange County. Because then we can franchise it. Real ones knew this lore. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So we're going to watch some clips and highlights from the show. A couple of these were in the Vicki Gunvalson stream, but not all of them. This is season one, Real Housewives of Orange County. For Brianna's senior trip, she wanted to do something with the cheerleaders. She had the vision. So gonna... That's what I'm saying. Lauren is who we thought Andy Cohen was. Go to Mazatlan, and I planned the whole cruise, and there's six girls going with three moms, so it'll be a blast. The fact that Brianna is leaving for college, I'm really looking forward to just being on a trip with her, absolutely. I'm really looking forward to my Mexican cruise. The drinking age is 18, so I'm really excited about that. Drink a little Corona's down there with all my friends, so that should be really fun. I really need to relax. Lori can handle the office. I think it'll be good for her to have some independence away from me. Thank and you, Lauren, for being smart, Aya. Andy Cohen's been making money off of women since day one. I saw someone predict that mom talk will get franchised like Real Housewives. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. I need to have a baby immediately. <laughs> I love Vicky Gunvalson. Your ass is mine if something happens to them. Something happened. A teacher thought that he saw drugs in Joshua's hand. Hard left. Since Josh has been in so much trouble before, he ended up in juvenile hall. It seems that the school thinks that he did something. I miss when they used to have real crazy shit on Real Housewives. Like Lori's son. And all his issues, I cannot believe she like fought through that on television. And her son passed away, rest in peace. Really bad. So he's been taken away right now. Wait. And um, well, it's just it's kind of, it's, it's called juvenile hall. A judge will decide what's what's going to happen to Josh and how long. Who he brings has the to family there. van to pick so up when six we got people? Divorced, Sophie was really too young to understand what was going on. And Ashley, being from a previous marriage, still had a really good relationship with her dad. 
but Josh it was very was sad. right in the middle of everything, and it really hit him the hardest. Yeah, she's divorced, and that was like her like season one storyline. One of my first memories is probably when I was. There were two housewives on season one who were dealing with like major life issues, major financial issues simultaneously. They used to be so transparent, and now they've learned how to avoid the cameras. And now so many of them will live in like a rental house on the show, and like everything is just so fake. They don't make. This is why I don't watch new television, and I only watch old television. Three or four, um, an argument. Um, between them, and then I just remember hearing plates and stuff being smashed around. Damn. I remember screams and stuff, and then the cops were there. It's pretty sad. Started drinking, like, when my parents divorced and stuff in seventh grade. Just having fun and stuff with it. It was late one night, and I was in bed sleeping, and I heard... It's because I think back then, these women signed up to be on the show because they wanted to share their lives and they thought it was interesting and i think now people just do it to like get instagram followers and have a podcast because no one wants to work anymore when i feel like back then they didn't know what real housewives was going to be so they were like in it more honestly it was the most depressing moment of my life so season one it was like actually pretty heavy um, here is the Real Housewives first ever reunion. Like, now the reunions, it's like fucking 18 hours shooting day, insane set, everyone's in full glam. The first reunion was literally just them in this bitch's backyard. Literally just them in the backyard. They don't fight at all. They're just like, oh, let's talk about the season. Like, they probably set this up themselves. Doing it for the plot versus doing it for the followers. Exactly. Like, it's not like they had pure intentions. They didn't want to be on TV, but they were doing it for the plot and being themselves, not doing it for, like, Instagram. And they literally just watch clips and discuss. Joe, what have you heard from Shane? Because I know you guys. Text. Should we ask Joe or should we ask you how Shane is? No, she talks to more than that. Yeah, gonna... Shane coming. He's not going to call me and say, Mom. Oh my God. And then when one of them was like to about to hook up with the other one's son. Something's funny or we hear something like. Oh, Andy you know, Cohen's not even there. Slade does know. Oh, Slade oh. likes Shane. They're friends. That's a very good looking hot. guy. And Gina, you, you have so done far. beautifully with your kids. Yes. But the you genetic know, thing did work out. Oh, I regret making that genetics comment. My husband and his mother picked me out of several of his girlfriends because they thought I had the right build for their genetics. It was just a little <laughs> comment. It wasn't like the most We are going to talk about the allegations. It was a joke. It, was, well, it wasn't really a joke. If he would have married the girl with the fat ankles, Grandma would not be talking to him. But, but it, it worked. You have three beautiful children exactly. and be proud of it. So I do the same thing with puppies. People are more important than puppies. Since Josh has been in so much trouble before. A peaceful reunion is crazy. Like, they're literally all just supporting each other. The women didn't start ripping each other apart until Andy Cohen entered the chat. Look how nice they're being. He hasn't been involved in Josh's life in four years. Why would he start now? My mom is when the one person. Imagine the outfits at a reunion now. Gina's Gina's husband was terrible to her. He really is. Watching himself on TV. Did it make him a better person? Did it help him at all? The way I look at it, I mean, it did make him look back and reflect at all the things that he's done and just. You know, getting caught up in a really. Well, I'm gonna make spicy cucumbers aftermath. tonight. I'm already I excited. For Josh, um, he's got what, like, 10 million viewers now watching yeah. him, and he's hoping for other success. kids that are So if you see Josh, Vicky's original you face is crazy. Please call Lori. So, literally, like night and day from what it seems like now. Here's some more clips from season one. I think season one of Real Housewives of the OC is the best television out there. So most of our videos are that. It's the best part of my day. This is when Lauren was driving it, and it this is the peak. Oh my god, I loved this storyline. So this girl, Joe, she's the one in the middle with the dark hair. She was dating this guy, Slade, like dating meaning like they lived together, serious relationship, and he had kids from a previous marriage, and he was trying to turn her into like a stay-at-home mom, and she was like, I'm 23, I'm going to go to the club with my friends and then he was like why are you always at the club and that was their whole dynamic so love spending time with joe i just wish she wanted to spend more time with us together as a family 
actually love Slade, but the more time that I spend with my friends, the more I start to realize how much I miss them. And I miss going out. Is it one, three? We are gonna talk hey. about New Year's Eve. <laughs> I would love to see Joe step up and, and become a scan of all stream that I've kind of dreamed of. See? He wants her to be a housewife. <laughs> I think it's like drunk cigarette. More. And I am home. But when it comes to night, I definitely like to be out with my friends. And when I do go out, you know, it's just innocent. I tell everybody I'm engaged. <laughs> Being a father is truly the most important job I've ever had. And anyone who's a father knows it is a job. It's crazy that if you watch the show later, he goes on to be like so deadbeat to these same kids. Ugh. The good old days of reality television. Last one, I promise. Uncle Richie's I don't been in promise. Life since they were born. He was Matt's bat boy up in Oakland. He was 13 at the time. And he's been real important in the kids' lives because Matt's gone so much. So I'm going with the family with Gina, Shane, Cara, and Colton to Cabo San Lucas for a family vacation. I'm looking forward to some fun. Richie's my uncle slash godfather, which technically I really don't think he is either of those. <laughs> I've kind of always felt like I was his little sister. He's trying to stay young and I'm trying to... Uh, sorry, the audio on that was too much for me. So anyway, Cohen has referred to the Real Housewives as a great feminist tableau, providing a platform for women over 50 to express their sexuality and explore new life directions. Unlike many reality sh reality shows focused on younger participants, the Real Housewives showcased older women navigating relationships, careers, and personal struggles. I will grant the show that. It was like, not many other shows at the time, and really not many other shows in general, show women over the age of, like, 40 doing anything. Like, they think, everyone thinks you just die when you turn 40, I guess. Um, the series broke new ground by highlighting issues of female empowerment, self-reinvention, independence, and offering fresh, fresh perspective into reality television. Oh, I have to sneeze. But, <coughs> it's gonna happen three times, minimum. I usually sneeze in threes. <coughs> My students hate it. After the second one, they're like, we get it. We get it. You're done. So one of the key insights that emerged from the early seasons was the importance of conflict driving the story. Initially, the show lacked emotional depth, but when, but with the introduction of a more kind of confrontational cast members like Tamara Barney, the show began to focus more on interpersonal drama. The shift transformed Real Housewives into a must, must, bleh, must watch series with fans eagerly tuning in to see how conflicts would unfold between the women. This perspective makes me realize why my mom liked it so much. Your mom has taste. So, following the success of Real Housewives Orange County, the franchise quickly expanded to other cities. The Real Housewives of New York City premiered in 2008, followed by the Real Housewives of Atlanta later that year in 2008, and the Real Housewives of New Jersey in 2009. Each city brought its unique flavor and set of personalities, but the core elements of wealth, conflict, and drama remained constant, driving the franchise's continued success. I have to blow my nose again. Sorry I'm sick. Does that, like, bother you all? Like, do you feel like you're, like, watching someone be tortured? Because just know I'm very happy right now, and I just am miserable because I'm sick. But, like, I could be miserable on the couch watching TV. I might as well be doing this. I'm going to stand. That's disgusting that I'm actually blowing my nose on camera, but I have no boundaries anymore at all. So that's just what's going to be happening. So anyway... Um, the Real Housewives has continued to thrive even through economic challenges and shifts in viewer taste. Cohen attributes to its longevity to its voyeuristic nature with audiences fascinated by the lives of the wealthy. Shows like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills have emerged as fan favorites with dr viewers drawn to the drama and opulence. The formula of wealth, drama, and personal conflict has proven to be timeless, ensuring the franchise's ongoing success. It's a 2020 class five. It's cool. That's how I feel right now. Um, would you consider wearing a costume about the stream subject? I would love to do that, but I don't think I have the budget for that. But I like, that is my dream is to do that, but in the most dramatic of ways. 
like the most dramatic of ways. So Real Housewives of New York. I will say I'm not a part of this. I've never seen Real Housewives of New York. It is on my list. Um, but following the success of Real Housewives of the OC, they expanded to Real Housewives of New York, which premiered March 4th, 2008. Initially developed under the title Manhattan Moms, it was rebranded to fit the Real Housewives franchise. It showcased a more urban, sophisticated take on the format, focusing on influential women living in one of the city's most glamorous, one of the world's most glamorous cities. The original cast included Luann Delisips. De I've seen a lot of these ladies on social media. Um, I need a full men's wig right now as Andy Cohen. Like, that's what I want. Like, I want it to be professional, so that's why I don't do it, because I can't do it to the level that I want it. A lot of Real Housewives in New York lore I know from, like, Twitter. So some of this stuff I know, and some of these names I know. Luann Delisips, she's like Countess Luann now. Bethany Frankel, she's crazy. Love watching her videos. Alex McCord, who I have seen clips of. She seems interesting. Ramona Singer and Jill Zarin, who brought a mix of business acumen, socialite status, and high-end lifestyles to the screen. With its emphasis on entrepreneurship and social dynamics, Real Housewives of New York distinguished itself from the OC's suburban backdrop by highlighting the fast-paced competitive nature of Manhattan society. Um, Countess, yeah. Maybe your boyfriend could be the bartender, like on Watch What Happens Live. That's my dream. He would hate that, and I need it to happen. Um, da -da 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 -da. It became known for its iconic feuds, outrageous antics, and the strong personalities of the cast, including Bethany Frankel, who became a breakout star with her sharp wit and business savvy. Isn't she the original owner of, like, the Skinny Girl brand? Like, the Skinny Girl margarita, the dressings, like, all that stuff, and then she sold it? The show was rebooted in 2022 with an all-new cast, but and I know people hate it. People are, like, upset about the new cast. I know that. Um, but its legacy remains as one of the most compelling and dynamic entries of the franchise. So this is some clips from season one. Again, have not watched this show. Ramona is always, you know, hot. Where is Jill tonight? And cold. You know what? I think she might be in the city. I'm not sure. Ramona? Yeah. Hey, I didn't know you were doing a cooking thing at Diane. Who's there? I don't know why. What's up? Oh, nothing. I was just curious. I was hurt. I thought that Ramona and I were friends. She can't be upset. It's not like we're having 30 people. I'm getting revenge. I'm going to get it on the tennis court. The game is on. Don't make excuses. Don't I'm not making excuses. That's how she normally plays. Shh, quieter. You're the one who's doing all the talking. Please look up Ramona on the right runway. Too crazy. Yes! yes! I think I might know oh, what you're talking magic. about. I see my name and Marla's name in the front row, and Jill and Brad are right behind us. This is bull****. I'm not sitting behind Ramona. I was very shocked by her reaction. I didn't think she was such a prima donna. I have heard it's worth the watch. Tacky and lewd and just, it's so insignificant. I don't go out. Excuse me? Gotta go. I'm going to that club downtown. Now? Yeah, bye. Bye. She's a friend of yours. Real. From walking out of my apartment, being rude to my guests. You know what? She's got like two minutes and then we're going to start. I'm getting so mad. We've been here for over an hour. I'm not waiting anymore. Hi, sorry we're late. I'm sorry. All right, whatever. I know I'm a strong woman, but she scares me sometimes. Get out. <laughs> no. Okay, Jill's, Jill's got her team Jill shirt on. <laughs> Available at bravotv.com. <laughs> uh, she was on... Jill Zarin was on Below Deck on an episode I watched recently, and she was absolutely insufferable. And I think we've got, you know, Bethany so, and Alex is possibly wanting to join in because we are giving 10% to charity. We thought this would be just a fun thing. What what gives between the two of you? We just are both two strong women and we're, we just... So know, on season two of the OC, that's when he started doing the reunion. So that's why from season one on New York, he's doing it. Because when this came out, OC was in season three. Oh, we're like... We're, we're, we get angry at each other, and then we love each other. It's like very different vibe from the OC, but still like that 2000s reality is TV magic in. is there. Um, ladies annoyed by Alex McCord. I think we should probably... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, don't you know you're at a nice dinner party? Uh, so I guess they have yeah. control them. Yeah. My daughter would never be able to do that. <laughs> Hello? Hi, you're hurting my ears, sweet pig. No, that's my, my daughter. Oh, I, I could, like, I have a, you stole my apartment. 
And it's yeah, like, like I always had my work on couches. From the time she was a child, she knew not to touch the couch. I could well, leave everything. And she's, like she's, she's very nice. Right. 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 I even if I was strict, I just taught them well to begin with. I don't know if I was strict. It was a formal event. That, I've never seen that before in my life. Francois comes over screaming. and starts stabbing the burger. And it was just unbelievable. It was like, ah, 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 ah. Bethany Frankel is funny to watch. Jason, you have, you have sound Jason, you. This is the thing that I feel like a lot, and someone had a comment about, okay, insufferable white women are such an interesting brand of women that I like to watch from afar. This is the thing that I think people forget about kids, is they are smaller than you. Those children are small. And you have, like, you gotta remember, like, they are small and you are large. Don't, because it can feel like they're so powerful. But you gotta remember they are small. I would have huh, under my armpit and walked on out of there. Bye, everybody. Looks like we couldn't participate. So we're done. Burger and all. Bye. Bye. Like, they are smaller than you. You can pick them up and remove them at any moment. So your children are allowed to play with food? Yeah, absolutely. Is that right, Johan? I would expect their children to be really disciplined based on the way that they speak about the rearing of their children. I mean, the first time I met Alex, she told me that her child can translate twinkle, twinkle, little star into Latin. I'd say it's a little more important to have a child not stab your friend's boyfriend's burger repeatedly. <laughs> I mean, what's going to be more useful in life? <laughs> I think we should She's funny. Uh, this is the season one intro on Real Housewives of New York City. To a certain group of people in New York, status is everything. I never feel guilty about being privileged. New York City is my playground. I run with a fabulous circle of people. I like making my own money. I find that an aphrodisiac. Oh. Pretty small cast. Well, it was originally going to be Moms in Manhattan. Um, Real Housewives New York season one reunion is Simon Gay. This will probably be offensive. Simon, we got a pile of emails asking us if you're gay. Gay? Listen, it's it's a sad indictment um, by a guy who can be into fashion, who adores his wife, worships at her feet almost. Is gay? Why? I mean, it's just a... When I grew up... I'm into sport. I'll, I, you know, I'll still lie on the sofa and watch golf or cricket is my favorite sport. Well, I have a great gaydar, and it's not pinging for you. I feel like you love fashion, you love Speedos, and you love Alex. And you'd be right. Absolutely. Our love is, is so special. And look, the emails we've had... How That's the father of the bad children, I think. In marriage. And it's, you know, gay. You know, the moral Girl, if I was gay, I'd be like, woo, I'm gay. Under threat and so Different on. Different Real Housewives reference. Relationship like we have seen on TV, people react, oh, he must be gay. Why? Just because you love Speedos doesn't make you gay. No. You know, I'm 44 and I can still carry them off a little bit. Okay. S Simon, we got... For sure. Uh, so back to Andy Cohen, more timeline vibes. I obviously wanted to kind of give the lore on like him and Real Housewives and how that came to be and all of that because I think a lot of people think it was his idea and it was not his idea. It was a guy named Scott Dunlap, I believe. So 2007, he began appearing in front of the camera as the host of Watch What Happens Live. It was initially web-based and then it later moved to TV. This marked the beginning of his rise to TV personality fame as his own self and his own right. And in 2007, he won multi-channel news' 40 under 40 in broad of broadcasting executives. So this is on his first Watch What Happens Live possible. It's possible you might have to watch a 30-second ad. Uh, and his commentary from modern day. So you have to deal with that. She's so straightforward. I love her. Back now. It when I watch the first episode back now, it's like watching the first episode of The Simpsons for me. Like, it's all there. You get the idea. 
but Homer looks kind of funny. Hey everybody, it's Andy Cohen in the Bravo Clubhouse having a midnight cocktail with Real Housewife of New Jersey, Danielle Staub. Hey Danielle. Hey Andy. I Cheers need to be to on this you. show. Salute, baby. And everything. I feel just... like it's unrealistic for me to be on Real Housewives right now. Like they're not going to let me on. What I think is a realistic goal is that there's a list for Watch What Happens Live that's like, we can call these people if the A-list person cancels. I think I can be on that list. I think I really can be on that list. It's kind of a little cruder than it is now. We pulled this little Bravo clubhouse out of our butts for about five grand. I mean, I think it looks good, but then again, maybe it, look, maybe it looks terrible. I remember running to the restroom before the first episode and looking at myself in the mirror and thinking, I'm actually not nervous. And then when I went in the studio, it was a little warmer than I thought it would be. It is so hot in here. It's a hot New York City night. We're with Danielle Stout from Real Housewives of New Jersey. I think we were calling in and saying, you need to be patted down. And he's like, I'm a very good poster. We had a number of issues. The phone lines went down. There's no question we won't take, and there's no way we won't take it. I'm watching him sweat. I going. love seeing like people who I view as like professional important have like fuck up experiences because this is one thing I've really been trying to lean into recently. This is gonna get, get kind of deep for a second. Is like it's better to do something shitty than to not do it at all. And the first time you do anything, it's going to be shitty. Like my first stream was shockingly good, but like the first couple streams I had, like not the best. First, watch what happens live. Not the best. It's hot as fuck. Their phone lines went down. Like, you don't know until you're in it. You should always find a way to put a wedge between your admin team and your curriculum team. I stand by that. Out, and I'm like, do I tell him? But yeah, he has to know. Actually, our phones just broke about three minutes ago. Uh, live TV, thumbs up. We're working on it. Especially because it's live. Us. So it's kind of one of those things that I think everything that could go wrong did actually go wrong. So that was our first of many techniques. So I, like I said, love to see a little fuck up professional moment. Um, 2010, he got an Emmy Award for Outstanding Competitive Reality TV Series as the executive producer of Top Chef. So again, him being in charge of Top Chef just does not land right with me here. I want to open this link in a new window and make sure that it works. Okay, cool. So this is... Oh. First openly gay man as a talk show host. What is this? Ever openly gay male host of a late night television show. Yeah. You made history. Yeah. And you're still the only one as far as I know. I know. Yeah. Um, he doesn't th even look like he's heard of talk show. Does that show. designation... That milestone means, is that significant for you? Uh, it, it, it's cool for me. I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, look, when I was growing up, I didn't really have many people to look at on TV who were gay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was kind of Charles Nelson Riley or Paul Lind, basically. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that in my mind, I thought that I wanted to grow up to be either one of those guys. So I feel like, if there's some young gay kid in St. Louis who turns on my show and says, wow, that guy's, he seems to be doing okay, he's happy, and he's clearly very gay, then, <laughs> you know, that makes me happy. That makes me proud. I remember. That's nice. From the show Finding Your Roots. Um, I think I have seen that show. So in 2011, he was promoted to Executive Vice President of Development and Talent at Bravo from 2011 to 2013. In this role, he was responsible for creating original content, developing new formats, and identifying new talent. Like we said, he did Queer Eye at this on Bravo. He did Real Housewives, Project Runway, Top Chef. And then this is Andy Cohen on Miss USA 2011. It's an hour, but he's there. <laughs> we are live and moments away from the start of the Miss USA. This podcast. is like the perfect gig for him, I think. It is one of these We're not going to watch this whole thing, obviously. Years. So to give you the inside track, we have a couple of experts. One of the hosts of E's Fashion Police, Kelly Osborne. Great song. And actress and former Miss USA, Susie Castillo. There they are. Hey, ladies, we're going to hear more from them. 
And this man is booked and bothered. He's ready to be on the big screen. So, in 2011, he published his first memoir called Most Talkative, Stories from the Front Lines of Pop Culture, and it became a New York Times bestseller. But it's actually... I don't know if he did this, but what most people do to get on the New York Times bestseller list is when you're agreeing to write the book, the publisher says, we'll guarantee you get on the New York Times bestseller list. And that's like part of the pitch they get you to write your book for them. So this is like for famous people. If a not famous person gets on the New York Times bestseller list, that's a big accomplishment. A lot of times if an already famous person, and because this isn't, he was not super famous yet, so I don't know which one it was. If a not famous, or if a, so if a not famous person gets on New York Times bestseller, very big accomplishment. When a famous person does it. So like, let's say I am like, I don't know, like Jill Duggar. I don't know if she did that. I don't want to use her name. She's had enough done to her. Who's a famous person, you guys? Let's, Oprah, I don't want to use Oprah either. Tiger Woods. I don't give a fuck about him. Let's say I'm Tiger Woods. A publisher wants me to write that book because they know it's going to sell. So they'll be like, Tiger Woods, we promise you that you will get on the New York Times bestseller list if you write, yes, VPR. Oh, I don't know if it was his idea, but he was in charge of it. Um, we will put you on the New York Times bestseller list if you write your memoir for us. And I'm Tiger Woods. I'm like, How, you guys aren't in, like, you're not the New York Times. How are you going to do that? And they're like, listen, Tiger, we buy the books. We buy all the books and we'll just send them to random people and news outlets and we'll buy so many books from ourselves that you get on the list. That's how it works. So when a famous person's on the list, it does not mean anything. Um, what is this? This is 2012 news, MSNBC. No, I don't want to support you. Bravo's Andy Cohen, host of Watch What Happens Live, also creator of those always entertaining shows, Real Housewives. Uh, she started by asking Andy about his surprising first job in television. I just blew your mind. Andy Cohen's paying bills at his office. What don't you do at this desk? Well, I don't clean it. That's what I don't do. <laughs> you don't. Do. Okay, so cheers. I had to get in the mood. Thank you cheers. so much for doing Thanks. this. This is like the perfect thing to do. It's exactly mm -hmm. how my desk looks. Drink first thing in the morning the with Andy Cohen. Yes. It's all good. Um, except before we get to this fabulous, fun part of your life, a lot of people may be surprised to know that you were a true newsman. Yeah, I was at CBS News for 10 years. It was great. It was, uh, I learned so much, and I think I it informed everything I'm doing now, weirdly, and in edit rooms. and. Also, in the podcast episode, Celebrity Memoir Book Hub, he they read the part of the book where he talked about part of the reason he wanted to get out of like quote unquote real news is because it was just like emotionally exhausting and he didn't like how disconnected he was getting from his work because he was like when you're going like shooting natural disaster natural disaster this chemical plant blew up like when you're going through all these dramatic things you cannot be so connected and he said he didn't like how they just interviewed the people and then like left um, so that's part of why he wanted to do the more reality stuff because you work with the same people again and again and it's less like heavy, which makes sense. And, uh, telling stories. Yeah. Well, you started as an intern and you didn't so much like the fact that you got assigned to the consumer unit, right? I you didn't. I was like at the, the consumer thing. unit of the morning show, which mm -hmm. I just felt was like a double loser <laughs> indemnity. And so, uh, but what I quickly realized was, wow, this is really exciting. I'm in the doors at CBS News and I'm doing you know, interesting work, and it, it was exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And with regard to your love of pop culture, did that start with your love of All My Children, which I used to watch too, by the way, and call All My Brats? Culture. It was just everything. It was just, I loved everything on TV. I loved, I have these Battle I do of the not Network have Stars I have DVDs that someone like sent me. And uh, I love, oh <laughs> I love, yeah, I, I, so I love, that was like the gay Olympics for me. <laughs> Um, you know, that, that was my Olympics. So I just love anything on TV and, yeah. and I still do. I went and watched those be filmed once. They were done in Pepperdine. Wow, yeah. Yes, so then I went out there and thought, wow, and yeah. Farrah Fawcett. After she tapped really it with her pen, he was like, yeah. yep, you're you, done. You loved Farrah Fawcett. I she did was your love dream Farrah Fawcett. Girl. I want my hair to be so styled gorgeous. like yeah, that. Yeah, no. not to love I wish I could Farrah do my Fawcett. hair like that. Yeah, but yeah. you also love Susan Lucci. Love Susan Lucci. Burnett, Burnett Spitfire, you know. So, I think we get the point there. It's an interview about his life. Um, and then he was on Miss USA again in 2012. 
Hi, I'm Danielle Doty, and you're on the scene with Teen, and we're going to be Related talking to, to Andy Cohen. Doty, spelled differently. I was just there. I am Danielle Doty, routine. standing here with the fabulous Andy Cohen. He's like, why so, is Andy, this, this toddler is your interviewing show you're me? Going to be hosting? What are you looking forward to most? Uh, I love live TV. I love the idea that you start with all these women and then one winds up with this clown. So mm. I love competition. Live Interesting. TV. He only wants one of us to be great. So in 2013, he declined to co-host the Miss Universe pageant in Russia due to the country's adoption of anti-gay laws. Yeah, I probably would also not want to host anything in Russia. Nothing against the Russian people. Some stuff against your government, to be honest. Would you do a stream on Perez Hilton? I think of Andy as him with a soul. Um, in March 22nd, 2014, he portrayed Zeus in Lady Gaga's music video for GUI. I love GUI, guy. Great Lady Gaga song. It's one of my favorite songs of hers. I feel like such a slept on song of hers. But I also like a lot of her songs that other people don't like, so that might just be a me thing. He's in the sky at 3.30-ish, 4, possibly somewhere else if I missed it. The video itself is not long, is long, not long because a lot of it's his credits. Lady Gaga is so, so, so iconic. <laughs> Love her queen slay. So what did she say? 3.34-ish. That, that was him. It was so quick. And look, there's the Real Housewives that are in it, too. I completely forgot about this. I love Lady Gaga for this. No, he's not a Republican. He made a documentary about gay Republicans. Because why are the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills in this music video? What are you doing there? I, I like briefly knew this i've seen this clip i did not realize it was from this music video i had no idea andy cohen was in it what are you doing kyle oh my god this was that lady carlton that was only on one season but i was so obsessed with her she was so crazy and so weird lisa vanderpump why is kim richards playing a guitar and yolanda hadid is poorly playing a cello you put the thing down there This is incredible. I love Lady Gaga, her mind. There he is. See, he's gone and the housewives are there. Great bathing suit. Such a good song. Carlton is an underrated icon. She was not right for the show, but I want her to have her own show. We have not talked about John Mayer. Her mind. We could talk about Lady Gaga. We should have a Lady Gaga stream. Adding her to the list. I know people hate John Mayer, I think, because of Taylor Swift. That might be wrong. I don't know. So, in 2013, he stepped down from his executive position at Bravo to focus on Watch What Happens Live, full-time, and other on-camera opportunities. He remained involved as one of the executive producers for the Real Housewives franchise. He is the epitome of, like, I rose to the top. I've proved that I can win an Emmy for fucking Top Chef. So now I can just be the gay best friend of all of these rich women and cause drama between them. Because I think he's doing it because he loves the grind. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't have to be working right now, clearly. He could be an executive that does nothing. But he wakes up every day to make these women fight with each other. And I respect that. This is Watch What Happens Live 2013. Hey everybody, it's Andy with the star of the Michael J. Fox Iconic show. Iconic during Betsy Christmas. Brand. And oh, the star of Kill Your Darlings opening in New York and LA October 16th, Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> Behind the ball is that film's director the and little wizard boy. John Croquillas. He loves the BS. You know, John said to me uh, that he was turning 40 today and he said, does that, make, does that mean I'm officially a bear? And I said, you're an otter. Harry otter? A hairy otter? <laughs> Is there any otter? Uh -huh, hairy we've done, otter. We've had this conversation. Oh, you have? Yeah, I, uh, yeah you, you just reignited an old joke, my friend. Oh, my God, because you know what? <laughs> yeah, he's... I'm now realizing me. you're a hairy otter. Yeah, he told me it too. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, Shrek I was, stream? Yeah, I, 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 I Listen, maybe. This, uh, term 
The people have called you Harry Otter? Um, yeah. Yeah. Why did that but I mean, that's One thing I wish we could do, but we can't because of copyright, is I could just screen share and we could watch a movie and I could commentate on it. Because I would love to commentate on, like, Shrek or Cars or, like, terrible movies from the 2000s, but you it literally doesn't let you screen share those websites. Redundant because otters are hairy. I mean, you wouldn't... Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't qualify if I wasn't. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But it's adorable that you're... So he's talking about being gay on TV, and that's what he wants to be doing. He's a regular guest on Today and Morning Joe, has co-hosted live with Kelly and The View. He's also made various guest appearances on other talk shows. He's made several guest appearances playing himself, such as The Comeback and on SNL. Um, not actually him, but funny, it's of him. Sofia Vergara, is that who I saw a second ago? Your girlfriend's watching Bravo. Up next... Watch what happens live with Andy Cohen. Don't you dare fuck with me. Hey, everybody. Why isn't it loading? Don't piss me off. Do not piss me off. We have suffered enough. No, what's happening? <laughs> Welcome to Watch What Happens Live. I'm Andy Cohen, and I gave myself this show. <laughs> <laughs> It's I funny because it's true. Because I'm a cutie pie. <laughs> <laughs> As a reminder, the show is live, so anything can happen, but don't worry, nothing will. It really is As just always, them yapping. My guests include one F list Bravo personality and one astonishingly famous person you can't believe agreed to be on the show. That's what I'm saying. I can be on the Joining list for when those people the Bravo cancel. Club tonight are two of the stars of Bravo's newest series, The Shaws of Sunset, Gigi and Mercedes. Hello, <laughs> also joining us is South African activist and former Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Because he really does get some insanely famous people to be on that show, and I have no idea how he does it. So this is SNL 2013. Parental discretion. I can't make the joke because of my job, but dream rotation verbatim what that show is like then he published his second book the andy cohen diaries a deep look at a shallow year what the fuck does that mean so in 2015 sirius xm launched a new radio channel curated by cohen for you to be getting a radio channel in 2015 it's like you kind of missed the boat on radio dude Really like you, but you missed that boat. Um, and it featured shows hosted by Cohen, Andy Cohen's Live, and Andy Cohen's Deep and Shallow. He hosted a series of special broadcasts known as Town Halls in front of a live studio audience um, and features with a bunch of other people. So, again, radio, not that interesting to me. Cohen and close friend Anderson Cooper announced they would be going on a national tour to perform their conversational show AC2 beginning March 2015. The tour opened in Boston, followed by Miami Beach, Chicago, and Atlanta. The idea for the show came about after Cooper interviewed Cohen about his then latest book, The Andy Cohen Diaries, at an event at the 92nd Street Y in New York City. I did not know they went on tour together. They what get the fuck excited is this? and start cheering when Literally, the what is plays. this? I will respect both Anderson Cooper and Andy Cohen seem to be at the dream place in their career where you have so much fame and so much money that you can be doing whatever you want. And it seems like they really just do whatever they want. Like I saw Anderson Cooper getting his shit absolutely rocked in the hurricane. And I was like, you're literally Anderson Cooper. You wouldn't, you don't have to be anywhere. Like you're, you chose that for yourself because of the, you love it, which I respect. It's going to be a good show. It's going to be a good show. They just sent Anderson to the hurricane. When he's not getting hurricane. celebrities loose-lipped on his nightly live talk show or caught in the crossfire of a housewives reunion, Andy Cohen and his good friend Anderson Cooper can be found on stage in theaters across America. The AC2 tour came about when Anderson interviewed me two books ago in New York City at the 92nd Street Y. And it was in front of about 1,200 people who really loved it. And it was a fun conversation. And we've always known that we have great chemistry on stage. But when we came off, his agent said, you guys could come up with something and show video clips. And 
structure a night of storytelling and conversations and take it on the road. I just want to say, you do realize I'm a fluffer for straight guys, right? Because your wives watch my show every night at 11, and you play the drinking game, and we have fun, and we party, and then the show's over like that, and then they turn and they're like, hey, what's up? <laughs> That is What's the true. idea behind it? What do people get from this show? It, it's it's really just a fun night out. It's like going to a bar with two old friends and hearing all their best stories. Andy and I have been friends for 25 years. You, some of you may know this story. We were set up actually on a blind date. You know when you know straight people and they're like, oh, they know two gay people and they're like, oh, you guys should meet. Um, Being in front of a lot of audience. I always forget Anderson. There's just nothing like that. So to be able to... Travel around the country with one of your best friends and just have fun. And All right, y'all did we're four Talking stops. about our lives and telling mm -hmm. stories and making people laugh. So. Podcast, you guys ready? They're on tour, doing the damn thing. So, New Year's Eve 2015, Cohen hosted a one off live edition of Hollywood's Game Night, New Year's Eve Game Night, co hosted by Carson Daly for NBC 2015. Well, Times Square is one of the top destinations in the world to ring in the new year. And if you can't be there in person, you can why always so count blurry. on Carson is it my to bring the festivities to you. In about a minute, you're going to get sort of the baptism of a brand new year. You another chance to get it right. It's 20 seconds. Where's my wife? Feels good. Neither of them are gay. Or neither of them are Republican. They're both gay. Sorry. Very impressive. Very impressive. Happy New Year, everybody. I'm here with my man Carson taking over. Why did I think he was Republican? Network. Keep it family. Right. Keep it family. But you right. have a, you have a special edition of Hollywood Game Night. Yes, okay. New Year's Eve Game Night Live. Uh, is that a good idea? That's a good live, question, Craig. Is that really live with celebrities playing games on New Year's with Eve with alcohol? Yes, I think it's a fantastic oh. idea. That is good He's like, like he doesn't want to do anything that's not. No live. further you know, questions. I can appreciate that. Then yeah. I can't get in trouble if something goes wrong. It's like, oh, it was live. Right. It's true. We're not yeah. live right now. No. no, we have you on a 15 second delay. Yes. As, as we do always. As we do always. It's a fantastic show. Although I did turn away when the shirt started to come off. Terry Crews, yes. Yeah. You look like at one point you may have been the only sober person <laughs> there on this stage. Craig, I've been doing this for almost 20 years in, in Times Square, so I was telling Andy. And it's really changed throughout the years. And my, I mean, I used to get. We could do a Chrissy really Teigen one. She's had a lot of scandals that were like non-scandals. And, uh, over the years, that has sort of given way to really just <laughs> doing what everybody else at home is doing. That's just having fun. We have Andy. We've got some great friends. So this is this kind of first realm into the New Year's Eve universe. Moving into criticism. We'll move into how he stole Kathy Griffin's seat later. So Andy Cohen faces criticism for a variety of reasons, including a perceived bias and favoritism towards certain cast members on his shows, particularly men and certain housewives. Some feel that he mishandles issues related to race and sexism, often dismissing problematic behavior on his shows, especially when it involves women of color. Others criticize him for his personal behavior, alleging that he's misogynistic, manipulative, and plays into harmful stereotypes. Some have also accused him of inappropriate behavior in real life, such as offering drugs and favoring young white men. However, other ap others appreciate his entertainment value, acknowledging his role in creating popular TV content, and feel that much of the criticism stems from a general dislike or unrealistic expectations for someone in his role. Despite the polarizing opinions, he remains a prominent figure in reality TV. So, in 2016, the publisher Henry Holt and Company announced it was launching the imprint Andy Cohen books. Cohen's third memoir, Superficial, More Adventures from the Andy Cohen Diaries, was published November 2016, a sequel to the Andy Cohen Diaries. The book covers diary entries for the subsequent two years. Superficial became the Times bestseller book among other written celebrities. Again, that means nothing from the New York Times. They're sellouts. So anyway, um, do, 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 do. In January 2017, Fox, I thought they meant Julia Fox, they mean the network Fox, um, ordered a revival of Love Connection hosted by Andy Cohen, an hour-long game show premiered on May 25th. The same month he played himself in the Netflix series Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, 2017 announced it would renew Love Connection, and later that year he succeeded Kathy Griffin as co-host of CNN's New Year's Eve coverage alongside Anderson Cooper. So let's watch Love Canal and then we'll get into how wrong he did Kathy Griffin. 
Love Canal. Love Connection. Love Canal is a song, movie. It's a different thing. I don't know what it is, though. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your I do respect him because he goes to show that, like, if you can't become just famous through the regular stardom path, you can achieve career success, that you have so much power that you can force becoming famous because you have power. The show is back, and it's hotter, wilder, and more shocking than ever. Right? Mm. It's easier than ever to get a date. Demi Lovato stream. This is good that we're having a lot of ideas tonight. I don't have my calendar okay, done. All about to change. We're taking things back to basics. Real people matched by our team of experts will be telling us every detail of their We get it. It's a love game show. First. So, New Year's Eve 2017, this is him. So, the reason that he is doing this is because Kathy Griffin got in trouble for the Trump head, which again, I get why people were mad. We talked about this at length in the Kathy Griffin stream. I don't think that she deserved the hate that she got for it. She was literally like on watch list getting arrested by Interpol at the airport. It was insane. But Andy Cohen took over for her. And you might just be like, oh, they had to hire somebody. Andy Cohen was her boss for years because she had the show Kathy Griffin, My Life on the D-List, and he was an executive at Bravo. So literally like to have your boss be like, taking that job when you're at your lowest of lows and apparently he didn't even call her about it when they had known each other for years which I think like I understand you can't say something publicly I understand it's a great opportunity and you're gonna take it but to be human you would call Kathy Griffin and be like are you okay like a lot's happening to you right now and the fact that he didn't call her I think just says a lot about him uh, no I do yes Making fun of Donald Trump too. It's just like icing on the cake. Rules have combined that the world of, of like reality TV and news have basically combined. Yes, I and, really and do. So they do have good on-screen banter. I will give them that. And you believe that the president uh, is actually using. He was drinking for most of them up to a certain year when they were like so no more drinking. I agree. Read some real tweets from Donald Trump, and I'm going to tell you how they're similar. So here's Nene Leakes with the first one. Nene. I spoke with President Moon of South Korea last night, asked him how Rocket Man is doing. Long gas lines forming in North Korea. Too bad. <laughs> They're reading okay, Donald so Trump the, tweets. This is kind of funny. Out of the house, you give your enemies a nickname. Okay. Wig, Jesus Jugs, Lion. So you think the president has taken that from the house? Well, no, I just think it, it is. It's, part it's of 11 of degrees. He's taken it. Here's Kim Zolciak Bierman with another one. Kim Zolciak Beerman. Despite the negative press, Cafe Fe. <laughs> okay, so that's classic. When in doubt, just. You can tell they're trying to fill airtime. So, do, 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 do. CNN has found a replacement for Trump's New Year for its New Year's Eve special after outsing Kathy Griffin following her Trump beheading photo stunt. The new network says that instead the co-host celebration will be teamed with Andy Cohen, the host of Watch What Happens Live. I like how they keep calling him the host of Watch What Happens Live when literally he like built up this network and was like, "Now let me have this little bar TV show where we just talk about TV, please." And they were like, you, you're the owner, I guess. So, okay. And that's just his life now. Um, oh, so sad for that. A storm of outrage forced Griffin to apologize for what she said. I, like, literally can't even talk about this. And this pisses me the fuck off where he basically shades her. And then I'll find a clip of them hey, drunk. I feel like we need to see that. Thanks, I'm really psyched. That's Andy Cohen talking about the New Year's Eve show he'll be hosting with Anderson Cooper. Because they're best friends, friends, friends. This is Anderson annoying. Anderson and Andy are friends. Even though cats. Andy Cohen. So I get him at LAX. And 
and I talked to him about replacing Kathy Griffin as the co-host of the New Year's Eve CNN event. Yes, because Kathy was fired for that whole severed president's head thing. So what does Andy think about being Kathy's replacement? Did you run it by her first before he accepted it? Or who? Kathy Griffin. Who? Kathy That's what, like, you worked with her for years. You worked with her for years. Who? Who? She had a very successful television show that you probably got a lot of praise for and a lot of money for. And you can't even say, you can't even have the decency to say, I don't want to talk about her. I'm sorry. You didn't have to say something nice. You could have just said, I don't want to speak about Kathy. Have a good day. Like, that is heartbreaking to me and so nasty and just so, so rude. So now let's watch some clips of him drunk on television because he did all of that just to proceed to get drunk with Anderson Cooper. I hate my little trackpad. Where am I, like, correct? I literally just pulled these videos up. Where the fuck did they go? Oh, there it is. Um, do, 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 do. Let me oh, tell no. You oh no. Oh no. please. Tell us something, Andy. Oh no. Watch so clear. much is happening. Is that a thing? Does one say that? I oh my just god. Said it. <laughs> Why is my computer doing this? That was really jarring. Okay. Sorry about that. Let me tell you something. This is them oh, sloshed. This is right after Andy. midnight. So they've been Watching drinking for hours. Search of Lazio. Oh, don't go on a rant. Do his don't go on a rant. Victory lap. Dance. <laughs> After four years of the, the crappiest term as the mayor of New York, the <laughs> only thing the that New Democrats York. and Republicans can That's agree how, on I mean, is what is how, a horrible mayor he has he, been. Wow. So, sayonara, sucka. <laughs> Here's another video of them being drunk and taking shots. Cheers to a Fecal year being over. What? A fecal year. The end of a fecal year. Is that a thing? Does one say that? I just said it. <laughs> cheers. I think you know what it means. Well, I know, but anyway. Anyway, cheers, guys. Okay. <laughs> Anderson Cooper looks so over this. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. One thing we all did this year, besides... He literally looks absolutely terrified. Cooper is the responsible older brother. Yeah, I will say, like I said, the way he did Kathy Griffin fucking sucked. But I will acknowledge him and Anderson Cooper have a very good, like, on television banter. So they made good TV together. I just don't like how they got there to do it. And this fucking grill stain is pissing me off so bad. Um, you can tell, like, the fucking grease all around it. So, anyway. So, Cohen played himself in 2018 um, on the show Riverdale. He also made a March 2018 appearance as a guest judge on RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, this is Watch What Happens Live Pride. Hey, everybody. It's Watch What Happens Live After Show. I'm here in the bar. New Nook with Sandra Bernhardt. Hi, Sandra. Hi, baby. And RuPaul Charles from RuPaul's Drag Race and Tabitha Coffee from Tabitha oh, Takes Over. Yeah. Now, for some reason, I've been calling you RuPaul. I've been using your last name a lot tonight, but do it, it flows. It, it, it works does. really well. Yeah, yeah it yeah. does. Your mom had a great quote that I read somewhere that said uh, something about that she didn't name you RuPaul Charles for you not to be a superstar. She when said, you with a name like that, he's going to be an MF star. Oh, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I love like that. it. Uh, Caroline Manzo tweeted and said, I want to hang out with RuPaul, very dapper. Yeah, I'm kind of over this. <laughs> love RuPaul. Um, Riverdale, don't mind the bad video. That she's more than just a housewife. And speaking of housewives, we have a very special guest, Bravo's very own Andy Cohen. Andy Cohen left the clubhouse this week to quickly pop into Riverdale and provide a celebrity endorsement for Hermione Lodge's run for mayor of Riverdale. Mr. Cohen, what brings you to Riverdale? I'm here this to endorse so my great friend Hermione Lodge. I feel like he literally just does whatever is interesting to him, which I do kind of respect. So, 
December 2018, he announced that he was expecting a child with the help of a surrogate. His son, Benjamin, born in February 2019. In addition, Mr. Cohen to being open about his journey, he is also active in advocating legalizing surrogacy in New York earlier this year. I have such mixed feelings about surrogacy. I think it's like great in concept where it starts to make me a little bit uncomfortable is like w like using a woman's body for money. And like I also I've heard of people who can have their own children and just use a surrogate because they don't want to go through childbirth and pregnancy. And, like, your body, your choice, and the surrogate, it's her body and it's her choice, but I don't know. I think it's getting to a point that, like, I, or not it's getting to, I can see it getting to a point where it's, like, pregnancy is, like, a poor woman's job, and that is what I really don't like. I think it's one thing if it's, like, let's say Andy Cohen had a sister, and she was, like, I'd love to do that for you. Like, I think if it's just, like, a human-to-human -human thing, it's, like, whatever, I, I don't have, like, moral issues around the physical aspects of it it's more like the exploitation of it that kind of doesn't sit well with me it's a very easily exploitable yeah and then when I saw like the Kardashians where they're like oh and then they just take the baby and give it to you that didn't feel like we're on a team together but like when Candy Burris used a surrogate and she like came to the doctor's appointments her family had met the surrogate they threw a baby shower and invited the surrogate to it that felt less exploitative than I've seen other people do it I think it's just such a like touchy thing I don't really have a strong opinion on it so one thing that I do have a very strong opinion on is I would give anything to have gone to this event anything this is his baby shower I need to be at this event desperately Dallas, Potomac. All the housewives, but only his favorite ones. Dancing on tables. Like, imagine being the only one from your cast not invited. Ugh, Teddy. Why was Teddy invited? Of course Aaron is there. I hate Aaron. Cynthia Bailey! Are they gonna have the clip of Lisa Rinna yelling? That's my favorite clip. Lisa Rinna is, on, is like, all oh, you motherfucking housewives, you better get on the table and shake your ass. You've made so much money because of Andy Cohen. Vicky! Erica Jane. This event looks incredible. As in Lisa Rinna the Eminem, yes. shower are you kidding me are you literally kidding me I'm gonna throw up I'm so jealous right now I'm so mad we should be there you guys so Andy's two kids he has two all about Benjamin and Lucy he has two children his son Benjamin is five now and his daughter is two I think this was written like a year ago so maybe that's a little off his both kids were born via surrogacy although Ben and Lucy were carried by different surrogates he says they are biological siblings so I guess he is the biological father of both of them he said family means everything to me and having one of my own is something I wanted for my entire life he said shortly before his son Ben's birth 
Though it's taken me longer than most to get here, I cannot wait for what I envision to be the most rewarding chapter yet. Cohen was 50 when his son was born, and he thought he never thought it would be possible for him to have a family. When I was growing up and when we were growing up, I just never thought it would be possible as a gay man to grow up and have a family. I'm so grateful for the wonderful surrogate that I'm working with. That's what I mean. Like, if that woman isn't being exploited, I'm really fine with this. I think it's just such a slippery slope. So his second child, Lucy Eve Cohen, was born April 22nd or April 29th, 2022 in New York City. The proud father of two shared a photo of Instagram, um, thanked his rock star surrogate and everyone who helped make this miracle happen. At just five months old, she made an appearance at BravoCon. He spoke briefly about fatherhood and the events that in the event, he often revealed how he turns to Sarah Jessica Parker and Kelly Ripa for parenting help. Kelly found me a nanny. Sarah Je Jessica found me a nanny. They've both been so helpful. So just kind of talking about his friends. I don't know. If he, I don't believe he's married or anything. I think he's just like a single dad rocking it. This is what I find interesting. He stopped showing his kids faces on social media. And I find it interesting that you're a reality TV producer. You've allowed all these other children to be on reality TV, being exploited, getting their trauma shown. Like on Real Housewives of the OC, there is a scene where a teenage daughter of one of the housewives answers the door to an eviction notice for her parents. He was fine with that being on TV. He was A-OK -okay with that. He's been fine with showing kids as their parents deal with divorce. And even though it's the moms on the show, the kids are kind of on there too sometimes. So the Bravo Big Shot spilled the tea on why he decided to stop flaunting his kids' faces on social media. He's planning to pull the same move with his daughter Lucy soon. So he stopped posting his son before he stopped posting his daughter. He, did, he talked about this in an interview with Today. According to Andy, the last time he showed off four-year-old Ben's face was during his Hollywood Walk of Fame ceremony in February 2022. As for one-year-old Lucy, whose face still sometimes makes an appearance on Andy's socials, he says he's leaning towards keeping her off the gram too, saying, I'm teetering towards not showing her anymore. I just feel funny about it. He made it clear that his kids aren't him and they didn't sign up for the fame game. People need to understand that my kids are not me and they didn't sign up for this. I'm figuring out as I, as I go. He shared that his mom has been writing him about the issue. She's really like, you have to stop. Okay, you can't show Ben anymore. When are you going to stop showing Lucy? His mom is in the know. So, hard left from talking about his children to talking about sexism. The debate over Andy Cohen's role in The Real Housewives has raised questions about whether he's fostering sexist stereotypes. Some critics, like Jillian Michaels, accuse Cohen of creating a platform that pits women against each other for entertainment, with Michaels calling the show harmful and accusing Cohen of disliking women. Cohen, however, defends the series, arguing that it reflects the complexities of women's relationships, friendship, motherhood, sisterhood, um, sometimes involving conflict, but not intentionally harmful. Feminist critics point to Cohen's hands-off host approach during the Real Housewives reunion shows, where he often allows heated arguments to unfold, allegedly fueling stereotypes about women being catty or overly dramatic. Despite these critics, the franchise remains as a top-rated program on cable, offering viewers a mix of drama and escapism. Cohen has also faced accusations contributing to the broader reality TV culture that some argue has influenced figures like Donald Trump. Where, where did that come from? What does Andy Cohen have to do with him? However, Cohen dismisses the idea that he's responsible for the trend, distancing himself from any political implications while acknowledging the dramatic nature of his shows. So he received the Vito Russo Award at the 30th Glad Media Awards. Didn't Glad recently come out that they've been mishandling money? Any big nonprofit, I'm a little bit, I got my eyes on you. They always have really high operating cost. And marketing. The bag, the earrings, the tiara, the gown, each piece is under $200. It's my ready to wear. Thank you. Uh, yeah, maybe I look like uh, Lady Liberty. Each time I come to Glad, I say, I'm not going to be able to outdo myself. Oh, this Glad is just her interview about him oh, getting the award. So, in 2020, it announced, was announced that Watch What Happens Live would be expanding its production, making it one of the longest-running late-night talk shows. Guess what? It's hard to believe we're about to turn the page on a year that turned us all into sourdough-breaking agoraphobes with separate drawers for daytime and nighttime pajamas. And while I do hope the door hits 2020 on the way out, I first want to hit on some staples from Julian this Michaels Crash trying to be a moral compass is Never fascinating. Have I ever, 2020 edition. Guys, if you've done any of the following things in the year, sip your drink. 
Never have I ever baked a loaf of bread. So this is his, I think, like, 2,000 episode specials with the little sign behind yeah. him. Guess set. what? It's hard to watch what happens live is on multiple nights a week, I think. So his second child, like we said, was born April 29th, 2022. He posted her, blah, 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 named after his mom. So this, oh, we already watched this, uh, but hey, we'll watch it again. It was funny. Happy New Year. <laughs> happy New Year. Cheers. Him ranting happy about everybody. the mayor. This is what happens when I don't make the stream as I bring stuff in when it's already in there at the wrong time. There's a hair stuck on me. I feel it. Let me tell you something. So, this is Andy Cohen on Drunken New Year's Rant, Getting COVID, First and something else. First host of Watch What Happens Live, as well as a best-selling They author. always call him the host of Watch What Happens Live. He's so much more than that. Housewife Herder and the intoxicated Ryan Seacrest of New Year's Eve. <laughs> on Friday, he gets a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Please welcome Andy Cohen. <laughs> Well, I kind of want to get to, like, the recent articles about First him guess. and stuff. So, this is no alcohol. It was announced they're taking the alcohol away from that guy. So, there was this time that Andy Cohen wore this outfit, and literally everyone ripped him apart. This is far more interesting than the politics of CNN. Um, but this was the outfit that we're referring to. He humorously critiqued this, admitting he looked like a lesbian toddler. <laughs> it's funny because he said it. I would never say that. Um, Andy Cohen thought the outfit looked good on stage, but acknowledged that the red carpet photos were unflattering and he deserved the online teasing he received. Took it in stride, even reposting memes showing his good humor about the fashion misstep. I think that is why he's done well is because he's able to make fun of himself hey everybody, we're gonna skip to over watch. watch what happens live is just like really not that interesting to me unfortunately but he's been doing it for 15 years actually we'll we will watch this i didn't realize I it had been that long that we are coming upon the 15th no. anniversary of watch what happens can live. you believe it no. yeah. <laughs> Really How many crazy. nights a week is that on? We are beginning a, um, a summer of celebration yeah, uh, this month. There's going to be a party next week, and then we've got a ton of stuff happening uh, on the air that you'll hear Bravo, about Bravo, Sunday and through Thursday. Really exciting. That's Actually, like, I he's grinding. Your he's doing that for the love of it. On the he's doing Watch show. What Happens Live for the love of it. We're skipping <laughs> more Watch What Happens Live stuff. I want to get to his on more scandalous recent so leah mcsweeney a former cast member of real housewives of new york city and ultimate girls trip thailand trigger warning on some stuff here has filed a civil lawsuit against bravo and nbc universal and several production executives including andy cohen mcsweeney's lawsuit is the latest in a series of legal actions by reality tv stars raising disturbing allegations about workplace culture and misconduct on the network's reality shows the lawsuit filed by McSweeney's legal team accuses the defendants of harassment, discrimination, and fostering a toxic work environment. The details filing a rotted workplace culture that allegedly pressured employees to consume alcohol despite her struggles with the alcohol use disorder. According to McSweeney, her efforts to say stay sober were met with retaliation and the company failed to accommodate her condition. She also claims that Andy Cohen, a central figure in Bravo's reality TV empire, participated in inappropriate be behavior, including drug use with cast members, and gave favorable treatment to those involved. So he was basically like... If you do drugs with me, that's a good for your career. Additionally, she alleges that Cohen made comments about her appearance after her breast augmentation, further contributing to the hostile environment. McSweeney's lawsuit also echoes allegations from another Bravo star, Carolyn Manzo, who filed a civil suit with claims of similar toxic work culture on the Ultimate Girls Trip. Manzo alleges that she was sexually harassed by cast member Brandy Glanville during filming in Morocco and that the production encouraged Glanville's behavior to boost ratings. This is why the Ultimate Girls Trip um, Morocco never aired. And I know everyone is like very upset about that. And I've seen very mixed things about this case. So I'm really not going to speak on the case that much. I'm just going to speak on Andy Cohen's place within the case, not on what happened between Carolyn Manzo and Brandy Glanville. I really don't know about that. Um, so the lawsuit underscores a broader reckoning in the reality TV industry as stars increasingly speak out about the emotional and physical harm they say they've endured for the sake of entertainment. 
These lawsuits are a part of a growing movement spearheaded by former Housewife star Bethany Frankel to unionize reality TV cast members and demand better pro- protections and working conditions. Both McSweeney and Manzo's filings paint a picture of an exploitative environment where drama is manufactured at the expense of cast members' well-being. That's kind of the point. As the legal battles unfold, they raise significant questions about the future of reality television and ethical responsibilities of networks and producers. Andy Cohen has called for a retraction and apology from the Real Housewives Network alum Leah McSweeney following her lawsuit that accuses him of using cocaine with cast members. A letter from Cohen's lawyers claim that the allegations are baseless and part of a shakedown. Mr. Cohen never used cocaine with any cast members on Real Housewives show or with any other Bravo employee. I wasn't there, but I know what I've seen. Has anyone asked Sheena what she thinks about this? Great point. Is Sheena okay? (laughs) Sure, Jan. (laughs) The letter reads, Cohen's camp is demanding that McSweeney retract her statements publicly. McSweeney filed the lawsuit in federal court accusing Bravo um, of exacerbating her struggles with sobriety during her time on the show 2019 to 2023. She claims the defendants pressured her to drink and retaliated against her attempts to stay sober, failing to accommodate her bipolar disorder and sobriety efforts. McSweeney further alleges that Cohen used cocaine with employees, promoting a culture of substance abuse. Cohen's lawyers refute these claims, stating that the accusations lack detail and were fabricated to leverage an unjustified settlement. In response, McSweeney's lawyer Sarah Matz used accused Cohen's team of attempting to intimidate her client. Yikes. Yikes on that. I feel like there's more to that story. Andy Cohen. Cocaine lawsuit. What's going on with that? Oh, no, that was March. It really hasn't been updated since March and May. Um, Oh, no, this is this is what I wanted. Okay. So this is an article from May 9th, 2024. Andy Cohen Cohen cleared of booze, drugs, and sexual harassment allegations as investigators find claims unsubstantiated. I also know that they, like, a ton of the housewives all signed a thing together, like a petition. They were like, we love Andy Cohen and he's done nothing wrong. So it was kind of like two against, like, 30. So if, like, 30 housewives are like, we love him, he's done nothing wrong, and two housewives are like, we hate him, even though I do think he probably does drugs with the housewives, if I was the judge, like, it's 30 against two, you guys. So, um, not only did Watch What Happens Live is still picked up, he's been clear to these allegations, an outside investigation into the recent allegations made by Brandy Glanville and Leah McSweeney have now been completed and the claims were found unsubstantiated. He's smart. He's going to cover his tracks. So here are some compilations to finish us off. Andy Cohen being messy and shady reunion edition. (laughs) And that's what I mean about like tonight was not really positive or negative. It was just him because I think he has kind of like an evil aura to him, but I don't think he's evil. I think he just likes money and drama. So then you said four women had had implants in the group you covered him very well thank you mainly my assistant chaotic neutral yeah like i don't think he's particularly bad for women or good for women well kenya is he's good for me because he keeps me entertained i just joined the club you did you did there was a lot of talk about the food or lack of chaotic drugs, neutral lawful uh, evil maybe lawful evil meat and cheese and a he's bunch terrible of for gay people though that's what i will say is like and i was gonna say this when we were on the clip but i was like maybe it's not my place to say it but you said it so i'll say it um where they were like oh you're the first gay talk show host on that show finding your roots he was kind of like yeah and i love that i think he like doesn't want to talk about being gay all the time, which is fine, but also he's kind of, like, doing nothing politically for the gay community, and I can see why people are upset about that. Someone tell me the John Mayer tea. I don't know. Could you not Let me Google it. caterer to get you some real food for free? I Why not cater. just have Sonic I, I cater pay, the wedding? I paid a cake. Can you just admit the only reason you had a five-hour gap between the wedding ceremony and the Him and John Mayer are besties? What? to feed everyone. 
I appreciate that. But if you really want to know the truth, production has to eat and break. That's not true. But I mean, if I was club. invited to a wedding you would at want seven dinner? thirty, yeah, we would have sent out for Sonic for you. Okay, well, I'd uh, be pissed. <laughs> sure thing. You got your solo cop? Is that okay? Sure. Now is Croy in the parking lot with the engine running? <laughs> your lips are considerably bigger. Yes. Yes. What's the end game on the lips? There's nothing backhanded about that. You're a little Sarah Huckabee Sanders. <laughs> Who the hell's that? She's Trump's spokesperson. Oh, oh. <laughs> you have a way of pivoting. No, I'm just trying to get... Okay. Okay, so this is what I'm finding in my Googling about this, that they're very close friends, and it's, like, rumored that they're gay together, but apparently they're not gay together. John Mayer's letter after Andy Cohen is asked about intense speculation surrounding their friendships. This is on Reddit, so really hard-hitting, reliable news. Um, I read your interview with Andy Cohen and was intrigued by your line of questioning regarding our friendship. You posted that your friendship with John Mayer has been the subject of intense speculation. People seem dubious for a, that a straight rock star can have a platonic relationship with a gay TV personality. I think this is a somewhat of a spacious, spacious premise. So basically, they're mad that everyone's assuming. I feel like I've heard about John Mayer being DL for years. Didn't Sheena hook up with John Mayer? How's Sheena feeling about this? Yeah. I see, I see people are talking about it, but I don't think there's anything really there for us, unfortunately. I just told I you I apologize. Like you kiss my ass. So I don't it know what really else I need to do. You know, what would you Nini, what happened at the Bailey Bowl? How come you didn't want to address the Marlowe situation? She was your bridemaid. This is long after he admitted to falsifying documents, right. whatever. And, 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 and long after you saying he's a bad guy, I got duped, I wasn't in on it. And then you're saying that in Ireland, which was mm -hmm. not that long, a few months ago, I had, well, you I had, said, I want to meet this guy in heaven. So what I is that? I feel... Like is he meet... going to heaven? <laughs> yeah, that's that question. I don't think you people that fake cancer get to go, do they? You're happy in this new relationship, so... It seems like he's friends that... with everyone. <laughs> Andy Cohen getting dragged for nine well, minutes up, straight. Like, you're going to have sex with tonight, tell me. I'll tell you when yeah, I go me. on a reality show with whoever I'm having sex with. Well, you're on a reality show right here, baby. I'm, I'm actually not, house. honey. Yeah. I'm not talking about this anymore. It's we a personal matter. Supportive. I want this closed down. Okay? Stop it, Andy. I'm asking you about your friends. I'm not asking you what's going on in your home. It. I don't want to talk about anything. I'm my own person. I've, a friend a great to all person. is a friend to none is life. Andy to a T. That is the perfect feet. description of him. And that's what I mean. I don't think he's evil, but I don't trust him. I think he's very self-serving. Like what he's done to Kathy Griffin, I think he creates friendship with these women to manipulate them so that they're good employees. Which, like, they signed up to be an employee, so I, is that wrong necessarily to build relationships with your employees to get them to act like better employees? You see what I mean? Like, I just have such mixed feelings about him. I feel like Andy, Andy, cons Andy always has something against me. I don't Jax. know what it is. Who, me? Yeah, you're always against Why? me for some what reason. I'm not against you. I don't know. I just feel like you go at me the hardest. <laughs> I got thick skin, but I tell you what, it's getting worn away as the years go by. I think Andy's rooting for you. A Andy's rooting I for you, like Jax. You a lot. Weird way of Jax jump scared. It seemed like almost, forgive the comparison, but it's almost like you're playing with your dog and all of a sudden your dog bites you by yeah, mistake. exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. You. No, but I, I no, I mean, it's like, <laughs> you're play, no, I mean, you're playing and then it goes one step too far. No. No? No, that's bullshit. You don't say that. I've taken enough abuse since I've been here. I'm not going to take it from you two. I, I'm not. I'm actually making playing your point. My, playing with your dog. If you're, play, if you're uh -uh. frolicking with someone, if you're, if you're frolicking, frolicking with someone, and then someone gets hurt yeah, by exactly. mistake. I actually was defending you. That was not a defense. Okay. Well, it was. Well, you're right. You have provoked people many times on this and show. And people have tried to provoke me many I hate times. Kenya Moore. Get that record straight. Andy Cohen. I Andy cannot Cohen, handle her. You shouldn't come for me. Let me tell you a little bit about Andy Cohen. Yes. He was a miserable boss for all those years. I mean, I think in the Speak on seasons it. that we did My Life on the D-List, I think Bravo visited the set twice. Eight Emmy nominations, two wins. I, I mean, I don't know. I didn't know. The whole time I was working there, I didn't know that Andy Cohen, like, wanted to be me. Like, for example, 
I hosted this award show one time called the A-List Awards. Actually, they did it twice. I didn't know Andy Cohen was on the red carpet, like trying to be funny, asking questions on bravotv.com. I didn't know Shade. that when they ended the day Bravo list, and I desperately wanted to do a talk show, Andy Cohen would be the first television executive in the history of television to give himself a talk show. It <laughs> seems to get picked up every season. But I can tell you a couple <laughs> personal things. Um, I mean, he really harassed me and treated me really poorly. For all of you that tweet me and say you wish I would go and watch What Happens Live and you like that show and you think I'd be great on that show, let me clear that up. I've actually done Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen twice in the, I think, 10 years it's been on. And um, I've never said this before, obviously, but both times I did the show, right before we went live, Andy Cohen privately asked me in an office in Embassy Row, which is the production company that does that shit show, if I wanted to do blow. All right, I've never had a drink in my life. You guys know I'm no prude, but I'm like kind of a straight edge. I thought he was kidding the first time. Uh, I believe her. Just so you know, uh, Jimmy Kimmel or like Myers has never asked me to do blow. You can say a lot of things about Kathy Griffin. You cannot call her a bullshitter and a liar. And I believe her. Before going on the show. I'm not surprised no at this at all. No has ever asked me to do blow before a show. So I was hoping he was kidding. So the second time I do the show, same thing. So once again, we're alone in an office in Embassy Row. And he's like, you want to do some coke? And I'm thinking, he's serious. Like, so I know he's She tells a joke, but never a lie. No, he was asking me to do cocaine with him. That Especially because she didn't say this when it happened. She said it years later after he publicly fucked her over. This is her after the Trump head debacle. She could have come out and said that, but she values her career, so she didn't. So that's why I believe her more that she said it later. The two of us in a room, Michael Davies was nowhere to be found. No one was there from Bravo. And that's why I don't do that show. I thought that was weird. Tell us, everybody wants to know this. Do you have a hand, Andy, in firing and hiring housewives? I do. What? I do. Oh, my God. <laughs> so if anything ever happens to me, I need to come for you. Yes. It's also not like what? Kathy is in the housewife circle either. Yeah. Exactly. This can't be good. Nene Leakes retweets calls to fire Andy Cohen accusations of systematic racism. What was the tweet? Really? I'm going to look this up now. We're going to be here a minute. Andy Cohen, racist. It seems like it's really getting overshadowed by the cocaine thing. Cohen, racist. Nini tweet, maybe? Nini leaks... Oh my god, you reached your monthly article limit. Leave me alone. Where's the tweet? Okay. Here's one. Okay. I found one tweet. I'll find more. Nene Leaks, we strictly talking to OGs. I was the only black OG. My white counterparts were elevated and given full season episodes every season. Each season I was given less and less. Don't ask me why. At Andy, at Bravo. Ask them why. And then she also tweeted, so much you guys don't know. I'm going to bed now. The systematic racism is greater than you will ever know. That's what it seems like most of the stuff about him being racist is like very, um, a couple... People saying things here and there, which doesn't make it not true. If anything, I think that makes it debatably more true. But there hasn't been like a full-fledged investigation the way there was with like the alcohol and the cocaine things. Bravo do be white AF. Um, Andy Cohen reacts to racism, discrimination, allegations in the Vanity Fair report. Where is it? Oh my god. Now it's like, it's like, oh, your ads, the fucking, do you support us? Sign up. What's your email address? The internet is becoming unreadable. Um, whatever, I can't find that little thing that popped up on Google. But yeah, it seems like the racism thing is really flying under the radar, but I think there probably is something there. Yeah. Okay. At BravoCon, you were asked about Brandy yeah. and you called her a friend. Denise, are you still friendly with Brandy? 
I am friendly with her. Yeah, I think she's a lot of fun. I love that she's a straight shooter. She doesn't have much of a filter, but I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and I truly meant it because I have no reason, I, at that point, I had no reason to say anything negative about Brandy. No, I understand, but, but you called her a good friend, and now you're saying she's not a friend and she's just an acquaintance. I'm just pointing that out. Look, I feel Nini like was trying Blake. to discredit this, and that's not cool. Because I'm I've not, I'm showing, I'm showing no, all sides. I, mean, <laughs> I know, and I actually, sometimes I've lost brain cells watching the show, yes. and I can actually, I get a headache, like I can feel them dying. <laughs> and also my liver has been bleeding. Marjorie from Biloxi, Mississippi. Do you want to be chewing on whatever this Sorry, is? Sorry, I'm going to swallow up. <laughs> I know you said that before many times. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tyra, like Tyra from Somerset, Nevada said last season, Jill probably Kelly more microaggressions, really subtle actions that are hard to call out, especially through like media. Karen That's what I think. I think the racism is probably very subtle. I don't think he's like overtly racist. I'm not saying that to make it like, oh, he's not that bad. I'm just saying that's why it's not really being reported on. Okay. Do you want to pick on this? Yeah. Find something real, Andy, because I don't like you. This one lady seems to really always be fucking with him. I don't like Who is this? I don't know her. Is her name Ramona? Back in the 80s, there were so many rumors about your relationship Ramona with Singer. Shirley MacLaine on Terms of Endearment. You wrote about this in your book. You know, so that was Andy Cohen was, getting dragged. Like the Kathy Griffin part was the best part of that. This is Funniest Moments from Watch What Happens Live. <laughs> and then we're gonna play our freaking game. Oh my god. That's what I mean. Like he I have not watched Real Housewives of New York. It's next on my list. Is that John Mayer? Um I we got a lot of nods from the front the See what I mean? And people are like, how does he get these A-listers? He was a behind the camera A-lister. He was a powerful network executive. For years and years and years. So obviously he knows the A-listers. My question is for Anderson. I used to watch you when you were the host of The Mole and fell in love with you. My sinuses are so itchy. I wonder if you miss reality television and if you're kind of jealous that Andy gets to do it all the time. Oh, well, guess what? It's also the late night most watched by women. He's doing these mm. debates, I bet it's a very like expensive ad spot. And he feels completely validated that now our two worlds have completely merged. Yes. And that he oh, can now moderate a presidential yeah, I have Brandy Glanville t uh, tweeting during my show about things I'm saying about her. He has the president tweeting about things he's saying about it. So depressing. This is called a, a shot ski. I have a shot ski for your oh. little baby. <laughs> Chrissy Teigen's an interesting person who has an evil spirit, I believe. Martha freaking Stewart. Did you guys see that they're making like a biopic about Martha Stewart? Or a documentary, I think? I knew. I was, someone with power watched my stream and said this needs a movie. And I was right. So anyway, let's play our freaking little Nearpod game. We're going to do the Halloween one. Um, so if you have not played this before, the directions are on the screen or I'll just put the link in the chat. You can do it on your phone. You can do it in a new tab. You don't have to pay money. You don't have to enter your email. You don't have to make an account. You don't need any of that stuff. But when it says like raise your hand or when it's ask for your name, your name will come up. So if you don't want your name to come up, put a little jokey joke and then the raise your hand and stuff like that. Normally I used to do my slides on here, but now we use Google slides because these were really glitching. Um, but yeah. Everyone go ahead and join. Love you, XOXO. Who texted me? My mom. I love Abbott Elementary. That is all. It is a really great... Sh not gratifying. Don't autocorrect me when I don't want you to. It is a really great show. I want them to put me on it as a guest star. So let's try to manifest that. How I text is, like, very much how I talk to you all. Very relatable sentiment. Like, she was just like, this is a good show, and I want to tell somebody. <laughs> I just caught up with it. My boyfriend was like, oh, let's let a couple episodes stack up. But people were talking about it online, and I felt left out. So I was like, we need to watch it right now, actually. Sorry. I'll give people a few more minutes to join the game. 
I hope that you guys liked tonight. I wish I could have been more involved in the planning of it. Also, I just realized there were a couple more Andy Cohen slides. I thought there was 96, but there's 99. Let me see what else is on here while you guys join. Oh, this is Kelly Ripa and Anderson Cooper. I don't need to see that. We'll finish off. What's next after Bethany Frankel? Oh, next week is the post office. We're very excited. So while everyone's joining the game, I'll put the code up here again and put the link in the chat. We can watch a little Bethany Frankel while everyone joins and picks their characters. Bikes on bikes. All right. Last chance to join the Nearpod, and then we're getting out of here, people. God, my throat hurts. I realize I haven't really been talking because I haven't been at work. All right. I think that's everybody. If you have not joined, it'll let you join late. Oh, I love your little Halloween costumes. You look so cute. And I like the Halloween music. I forgot to preview these questions in advance. My assistant made these. Ge genuinely forgot to look at them. Well, I didn't forget. I was looking and then I ran out of time. I don't know the answer to this. Bethany is only for a few seasons. It still does seem like this show is really giving something, though. Oh, he was born in 1968. Most people thought 1972. I don't know what the... I didn't know that. <laughs> what is the name of his talk show? You should all get this one right, because it literally feels like... Like, we're the audience, and he's like, You gotta watch what watch happens live! Put me on TV! Like, he's forcing us to do that. If he was never in, a, like, a network executive, that show would not exist. Which is interesting. I, I do admire him for that. What is he known for producing? Andy's Snowflake Dealer. Absolutely incredible. Y'all are quick with that one. The Real Housewives. Imagine if he did the Kardashians. What is the name of that radio show he hosted? Oh, I skipped over this. Sorry about that. It was just kind of boring. Wasn't, isn't Ryan Seacrest the producer of the Kardashians? I think we talked about that when I did my um, Kris Jenner stream. Radio Andy. Who is Andy Cohen's longtime friend and collaborator? Oh my god, I forgot to tell you all. When me and Fraz were in Vegas, I found the Lisa Vanderpump restaurant. We didn't go because it was expensive and they, like, require reservations. But I was standing outside of it for a brief moment in time. What major event did Andy Cohen do with Anderson Cooper that occurs once a year that was controversial in 2022? Oh, I hate being sick so much. It makes me go so crazy, and my pictures are falling down on the side of the wall, which is pissing me off. The New Year's Eve celebration. Imagine if it was the Met Gala. In what timeline? How many kids does he have that he shields from the public eye, unlike everyone else's children, which he shoves into the public eye? He might as well have been a producer on John and Kate Placid, if we're being honest. I love the Halloween Nearpod. Which one of these was he on? RuPaul's Drag Race, Friends, Frasier, or Big Brother? He made you rich. Shake your ass. I love Lisa Rinna. People hate Lisa Rinna, but I'm unfortunately a Lisa Rinna stan. I think she's hilarious. The Munchausen by proxy thing was fucked up, but... Which one of these did he produce? This is the one I was saying I've seen mixed evidence on if it was him or not, but I'm choosing to believe it was him. It takes two. I still can't believe he won an Emmy for Top Chef. That's, like, so random to me. Which award did he win? Glad, Grammy, Tony, or Nobel Peace Prize? There should be, like, a Nobel Chaos vibe. Prize. We're like, you didn't do anything where anyone got hurt, but you're just like contributing a lot of chaos to the community. Like the reverse of the Nobel Peace Prize. It's like, whoa. That's a lot. Again, not bad. 
I am so happy that Andy's Snowflake Dealer is in the first spot. Then we have Unstable Garbage, AC Squared, He Made You Rich, Shake Your Ass, Saturn Cat, Vice President of Real Housewives of Atlanta, Generic Housewife, Sarah Countess, Token Man, That's My Opinion, Clubhouse Parking Lot, Lola, Andy Cohen got the 411, Bleep Bloop, Blow by Blow, Tori, A Dutch Bros Parking Lot, Ashley Poo Poo, Beth, Andy is Drunk, and Tori. Nice job, nice job. I'm only going to stick around for a couple seconds for memes, but I want to give anybody who had one the opportunity to have one. Anyone has anything that we missed? Honestly, I wanted to find more bad stuff and more scandals about him, but there's really just not a ton out there. Like we said, he kind of seems like lawful evil. Like, he has, like, an evil little vibe. I think he definitely is a touch misogynistic. I think there probably are a lot of microaggressions and subtle racism at Bravo. I think he's probably doing drugs with his favorite castmates. I'm sure that most reality TV producers are doing drugs with their favorite castmates. And that's just kind of who he is. Not a great person. Not the worst person. I guess you're all vice presidents of the stream since there's a VP of everything. Not the minions. I hope I feel better soon, too. That would be great for me to feel better. But if we look historically at when I've been sick, it'll probably not be soon. I used to be, like, very, like, quick recovery. But then lately, it's been, like, every time I get sick, it's, like, a full, like, 20 days before I get better. But maybe because I'm off work and I'm actually sleeping. Because I will say I feel so much better today than I did yesterday. I think because last night I went to sleep at, like, 9 o'clock and didn't wake up till 10 o'clock this morning. I was, like, on and off asleep for parts of that, but... I think that's really contributing to it. But anyway, please, if you have not donated to Dr. Shofian's fundraiser, please, please do. Um, he's working on getting PayPal reinstated. I'm not 100% sure what's going on there. And then next week, we are doing history of the post office. Yes, we will talk about people sending children in the mail. I have not planned this one yet, but that needs to be a part of it because I have heard about that. And someone was like, I thought you already did history of the post office. I don't think I did, but we did talk about the post office a lot when we did the anthrax stream. So maybe that's what we're thinking of. But honestly, you could be right. We've done so many things at this point. It's very plausible. I could forget some of them. But anyway, thank you so much for being here. Andy Cohen, if you're watching this, uh, like I said, I think you've done some good things and some not good things. But I think a good thing you could do would be putting me on television. In any way, shape, or form, I think you putting me on TV would be great for both of us. I'll do anything. I'm really a jack of all trades. You can give me my own show. I'll be the bartender on Watch What Happens Live. Just let me on the set. Like, I'll literally do anything because even though I think you might have a questionable moral compass, I do think you could launch my career. And I think that if you met me, you would see the potential that I have. Because look at, look at this. This is a fighter right here. All your housewives that show up fucking three hours late, bitch, I have the flu or the plague or something, and I was on this bitch, on time, lashes on, ready to fucking go. That's the employee you need. That is the employee you need. And this is my official pitch for you to hire me to do literally fucking anything. I'll clean your floors. I don't give a fuck because I know once you meet me, you're going to be like, she needs to be on TV. So you can literally hire me to be your fucking maid. And I know that I can rise from that position. Someone please clip that and send it to me. Just me with the plague pitching to Andy Cohen. But I will see you next week for the history of the post office. Thank you so much for being here. I love you very much. Um, and I can't believe it's basically Halloween and almost Christmas.